Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be, my girlfriend has a sugar daddy. Is she redeemable? Well, this particular email is from a guy. He has been with his gorgeous girlfriend, as he puts it, for a year. And so one night recently, for whatever reason, maybe his spidey sense was tingling, his intuition was telling him something was up. So he decided to go through her phone and come to find out she basically had a sugar daddy that she had been hanging out with, going to lunches and having sex with this guy for a large part of their one year relationship. She claimed when he confronted her about it that the sex stopped once they became exclusive and he looked through Obviously, he'd looked through all of her texts and her messages with this particular guy, and he didn't see any evidence that she was sleeping with him, but a lot of things were deleted from the text exchanges. So what was deleted, we don't know, but at the end of the day, she supposedly is no longer talking to the sugar daddy, but it's like thousands and thousands of dollars she got from this dude over the time that they were supposedly exclusive. And so he said this like totally crossed his boundaries. He he broke it off with her. Apparently she's in therapy as well now. He says, but, but he kind of misses her and wonders if getting back together with her is a good idea and if she's redeemable. So let's go through his email in detail because it's really over like the last five, ten years that this is kind of, I mean, this kind of thing has always been going on. But with social media, when you look at literally it's a multi-million dollar industry, the sugar dating industry, that it's, there's a lot of girls that do. A lot of girls go through, put themselves through college and they make a lot of money hooking up with dudes for for cash instead of a relationship or anything serious. If you've been on Hinge or even Bumble, some of the most common dating apps the last few years, you'll notice that there's a prevalence of women that are on there that'll match with you and you think, hey, this conversation's moving on great. This girl's hot, she likes me, cool. And then come to find out what she's really hoping to do because there's so many desperate, thirsty dudes on the dating apps is that she tries to get you to pay her a couple grand a week to come hang out and have fun and and hook up and basically be a friend with sexual benefits. So it's pretty common. So we hear about these things all the time. There's plenty of podcasts out there that have lots of these girls on and almost at 100% of the cases there's no dad. There's there wasn't a tight family together and it's just so when you have women that are raised in a kind of like a survival type of mindset, they're going to definitely be more inclined to do this. But I was telling an example, I was hanging out with a high school buddy a couple weeks ago, and I talked about this recently in a video newsletter, and we were talking about some of the girls that we grew up with and went to, went to school with, and there was one in particular that came from a very wealthy family, very powerful family, very successful and this girl, the daughter was just absolutely smoking hot, just beautiful. And I didn't know this at the time, but because she wasn't there the whole four years that we were in high school, I think she dipped out after sophomore or junior. I can't, I can't remember. But it was pretty common knowledge that she had like slept with half the football team of uh, St. Thomas and um, a lot of dudes that I went to Gibbons with. And I was surprised because she's beautiful. She had this innocent look about her. And meanwhile, she was a total freak. And yet she came from a very wealthy, very successful family. Her parents were wealthy. They did travel a lot. So maybe she was mostly raised by the nannies and the help. And the parents weren't around as much to influence her. But you would think that a girl that comes from that background with that kind of family is just going to be the perfect girl. And come to find out, she was just a, a nymphomaniac back in high school. I mean, she probably, but by the time we graduated, she had a body count of over 100. And there were several girls that were like that. And the conversations I was having with my buddy was that, the, you know, 
guys had common knowledge that, or once they found out that this is what these girls were doing that like one week he's out on a date and he finds out like a week prior to him going out on a date the girl that he'd gone out with and hooked up with was hooking up with two of his guy friends one of them was giving it to her doggy style while she was blowing the other friend and you're like and once he heard that and found out he's like well that was great to hook up with her but I'm definitely not interested in wifing her up or getting into a relationship. We all love her and cool chick. But, you know, when she's doing things like that and then you're finding out because people are like, you're what? You're dating or what? And so you get you get your balls broken by your, your other buddies. And it's like, hey, she's kind of like the school bicycle. So, I mean, these the big part of what if you're – looking to be exclusive if you're looking to be monogamous if you're looking to be to get married and you're crazy enough to involve the state in your relationship or maybe you're religious whatever it happens to be bottom line is if you're looking for somebody to be exclusive monogamous you're you have to evaluate their character this is part of the vetting process does she keep her word is she easy going easy to get along with does she communicate well is she loyal does she come from a background where the parents were loyal. But even, like I said, the one girl I was talking about came, had every advantage. Beautiful, cool parents, wealthy parents, going to the best schools, driving brand new, beautiful cars, shopping at the nicest places. But yet she's just totally getting run through. And more than likely her parents, I would assume, had had no idea that that was going on. I didn't even know what was going on at the time until my buddy was telling me. I was like, her, really? I had no idea. But then again, she wasn't there the whole time that, you know, she was only there for a couple of years and then transferred somewhere else. But maybe that was one of the reasons because that kind of got out what she was doing. Maybe her parents pulled her out of school. I don't know. But it, even somebody that supposedly comes from the perfect background can turn out the same way. And then there are plenty of women that come from broken families and backgrounds that choose not to be like they were in their family so you have to take it on a case-by-case basis you've got to evaluate somebody based upon their actions because character is destiny and as gerald salente of the trends research institute so brilliantly says current events form future trends so with that in mind let's go through the email it's not a real long one He says, hey, coach, thanks for all you do. I could use some advice, probably a come on, man. He says, I discovered your work a month ago when the wheels came off my relationship. I was with my gorgeous girlfriend for a year, but I started to notice things not really adding up with her finances. In other words, he knows how much she makes, but man, she sure spends a lot of money on a lot of things. Everything was great leading up until then. She was very loving and pursued me the entire time. Looks can be deceiving. He says, I went through her phone one night and discovered that she had been hanging out, going to lunches, and receiving money from a man for a large portion of our relationship. Many thousands of dollars. I confronted her, and she confirmed this was true, but said she had stopped sleeping with him when we became exclusive. Keep in mind, she never told him about this guy, And even when they're exclusive, he thinks his girlfriend's totally dedicated herself to him. Meanwhile, she's still hanging out with a guy she used to have sex with, but now it's just casual lunches. And I'm sure if if you're sitting there going, okay, so she continues to hang out with this guy. He continues to give her thousands of dollars in money. And he's going to be cool with that when she cuts off the sex. Yeah. That does not sound really believable. He said the text sort of backed that up. It's interesting. Well, let me finish this. He says, but the thought of them hanging out in her apartment alone during our relationship makes me extremely question this. Also, many texts were deleted. She probably thought on some level if she stayed with you long enough that eventually you would get access to her phone or see it. And so she thought it would probably be a good idea to delete certain incriminating texts. And so is she willing to tell you what texts were deleted and why she deleted them? She probably got an excuse 
for that as well. But if you take a step back and you look at that and you go, she carried this whole thing on. She deceived you. She lied to you. She kind of came clean, but there's a lot of missing data and information. So we're just supposed to trust her? Well, character is destiny. So we know she deceived you on purpose. We know that when you guys were dating, she was still having sex with this guy. And even once you became exclusive, she spent a lot of time hanging out with him and he gave her thousands of thousands of dollars. Did he continue giving her thousands of dollars for blue balls in return? It's like, eh, I don't know if I believe that. If I'm a betting man, I would not be willing to take that bet that she didn't sleep with this guy. It's possible, but is it likely? I mean, if it was totally innocent, then all the text would be there. There wouldn't be a lot of deleted messages. So if the messages... I mean, there's only, there's only one reason to delete messages, and that's if the messages make her look bad and make her look disloyal, make, you know, give the evidence that she was still sleeping with this guy. Because if she's going through deleting texts, she's obviously thinking on some level, hey, if my boyfriend ever finds out and goes through my phone, let me clean this up because then I can kind of explain away most of it. But obviously what was deleted was probably pretty damning, and so... If she's being deceptive about that, she was deceptive about keeping this from you. Supposedly you're exclusive, yet she's inviting this guy to come over and hang out at her apartment. And we're supposed to believe that he continued to come over there and give her thousands of dollars and he's going to be cool with not having sex anymore? I don't believe it. I wouldn't believe it. And obviously this guy didn't either. He says she is very apologetic and has showed me she cut off all contact with this guy. She's also in therapy, and I broke up with her anyway. It's just all way too fa- too far past my boundaries. Problem is, I kind of want her back. Is she redeemable in any way? Well, if we look at the evidence, if we look at deleted texts, if we look at the fact that she kept this relationship from you, if we look at the fact that she's basically a hooker, that's what it is. If you're getting paid money to give out the pussy, you're a hooker. Sorry, that's just... That's a fact of life. And you can't solve problems unless you can talk openly and honestly about it. And that's the bottom line is that she was doing inappropriate things and she was hiding it from you. She was deceiving you. And why is she deceiving you? Because it shows character flaws. Yeah, she's in therapy, but at the end of the day, she still did you dirty. If it was me... If I was in a situation and knowing women the way I know them, because I've, I've had an experience. I, I knew a girl that she had a boyfriend, and yet she had like three or four sugar daddies that she would go hang out with and send pictures to and stuff like that, but supposedly wasn't having sex with these guys. Yet, in my own personal experience, because of things this particular girl said to me she made it pretty clear she was down to also hook up even though she supposedly had a boyfriend which she kind of kept on the down low but at the end of the day she's hanging out but she always claimed that the dude she was hanging out with it was nothing going on physical it's just she would send them pictures and selfies and stuff like that and chat with them to kind of keep them company and they would just continue sending her money but she's like i would never never slept with any of these guys even though she hinted that she would be willing to do (laughs) do this with yours truly and i was like what so when that particular this particular girl came from a broken family as well and on top of that no dad And so she's raised in survival mode. And so she could be sweet as pie and smile to your face. In reality, you find out all these other things are going on. So women definitely are capable of this. And all you really have to go on in these kinds of situations is how do they behave? What are their actions? Current events form future trends. If they're on sugar dating websites and they're meeting guys for money... But yet they say, oh, I'm not sleeping with any of these guys. 
And and by the way, I don't I don't believe this girl's I'm talking about this girl's boyfriend even knew that she had these sugar daddies. But it was kind of one of those things too. She always had nice clothes, got money from these dudes, and she always had nicer things than quite frankly she could afford because I knew what she did for a living and her job and how much she made. And so she lived way above her means. So like like I said, my experience and it's like I mean, if you ever saw I when I I did the interview with uh, Anthony Dream Johnson, president of the Manosphere, he did a video, a whole long talk. I think it's a couple hours long, called "I Married the Woman Medusa." I married the woman from hell, or something like that. And he married his first wife. Come to find out, he had no idea they were having great sex. He thought she was loyal and faithful to him, and then come to find out, she had been cheating on him constantly with a bunch of other dudes because again she was living way above her means and the way she was earning this money is even though they the whole time they were dating the whole time they were married she was secretly meeting other guys to have sex with them for cash and then obviously you know i mean you can go watch the video it's pretty it's pretty eye-opening and so every guy should see that because again it's character's destiny when i look back at what i saw in high school and now with like what the internet facilitates when you got websites out there like the sugar dating websites it's it just makes it much easier for women that are inclined to do this and always have been doing this to do it on a much bigger scale in a much more lucrative way instead of everything being hush hush and you know like i said like the girl in high school it's like you just this girl is so beautiful, so hot, so nice, so sweet. And yet she was just like sleeping with everybody. And I had no idea at the time because I only knew her for, you know, a short period of time because she ended up going to another school. But it's like, damn, character's destiny. And so, you know, I've, you see these patterns in life. It's like, what does the evidence show? It's oftentimes if it's incriminating you'll see here and like the girl that i know claims she's not sleeping with these guys that she's hanging out with for money but yet at the very same time she's offering to cheat on her boyfriend so she's willing to cheat on her boyfriend and have sex but then said even though she's on these other websites and says oh but i'm not sleeping with any of them it's like yeah the evidence there goes yeah you're probably lying Because this girl also had a pattern of lying a lot and getting caught in her lies and then telling more lies. And it's like character's destiny. So if somebody's a liar, as Maya Angelou said, when somebody shows you or tells you who they are, believe them the first time. That's that's what I've seen. And so this guy's he's like, I want her back, but is she redeemable? If it was me, I mean, your first instinct was like, I'm out. I'm out of here. And you should trust that. You should trust what your because your your intuition served you right. That's what your intuition is. What caused you to go through her phone? And so the evidence that you saw backed up that your intuition was going something's wrong. Something's off with this girl. But this is why you don't go and get married right away. You don't move in right away. You don't have kids right away. I mean, sometimes you slip one past the goalie. It happens. But. <clears throat> You gonna put a ring on her finger, especially if you live in a blue state. You gotta be careful. That's why it's always gonna be best to date for two or three years before. You, if you're one of the guys that wants to get married and involve the state, which I personally would not do, but if that's what you want to do, then you gotta vet the women properly. And when you see stuff like this, and it's like you connect the dots, it's like if it looks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, if it walks like a duck. It's got to be a duck. And in this case, she belongs in the streets. I wouldn't give her another chance, but it's your life. And I, I'm a, the way I look at it is you made the right decision, but obviously you're second-guessing yourself. And typically the only reason a guy is going to second-guess himself after the breakup is because you haven't found anybody else that's as hot or as fun and that you connected as well with as this girl. And that's part of the, that's what keeps most people in unhappy, unfulfilling relationships is you hope it's going to change. 
It's like, in other words, he's in love with the fantasy of who he wanted his girlfriend to be, but he found out the reality, just like my high school, this girl I knew from high school, or a couple of girls I knew from high school, it's like the reality was, was completely different than what I had thought. So looks can definitely be deceiving, and when you've been deceived on this level, it's best to say, hey, it was a good learning experience, we had fun, but... Uh, you know, and quite frankly, she needs to learn that she can't behave this way and expect to keep a guy that is going to be loyal and faithful and monogamous to her. If she's going to act like a hoe, she's going to get treated like one. Therefore, she's going to get discarded. She can choose to live that way. I mean, you know, in this world, especially with the Internet and easy access to guys that are thirsty and have more money than common sense, it's it's easier today to do this than it was when I was in high school or back in the day before the internet and all that stuff. But this shit's always been going on. It's like a lot of the guys in the red pill community talk like this is a new thing or modern women. It's just, now it's out in the open. This is like what's always been going on throughout all of human history. Men have kept mistresses. They've had women that they were sleeping with and hooking up with that they bought them an apartment. They bought them a car. They paid for all their clothes. And when they got time away from their wives and their family, they would go over and give them the meat missile. It's like this is this is not this is not new stuff. This is not modern women. This is how women behave that have no integrity. Women that are these are the kind of girls you can have fun with, friends with benefits, fuck buddy, sex playmate, one night stands. These are not the the women you take home to mom and you wife up. You just you just don't. It's the way it's harsh, but it's the way it is. And so there's basically two types of women in society, and there's always been two types of women in society. There's the hookup girls and the party girls, and the girls that are fun to rock out with your cock out. And then there's the other women that are family oriented. They're the kind of women that you'd want to have children and raise a family with because they have good character and they will be good mothers and good teammates to you. And so you just have to see reality as it is. And so when you see evidence of all this ratchet-like behavior, you're going to say, oh, I was in a relationship with a hookup girl, a party girl. But now I know what I'm really dealing with because the truth ultimately comes out because this is still part of the vetting process. This is why you date for two or three years. This is why you'd want to live with somebody before you ever consider getting married or being super serious because the truth is going to come out. She's going to get sloppy. And in this case, him being with her for the whole year and noticing that she spends way more money than you know that she makes, well, the money's coming from somewhere. And so she's telling him things because he probably asked her about it, and she's giving him stories and excuses that don't really make sense. And therefore, his spice sense is going, ah, that doesn't add up. And so therefore, he goes through his phone, and he finds the evidence that he was looking for so he can make an intelligent informed decision and so the key is to be congruent with that because if you want loyalty monogamy exclusivity it's not going to be with a girl like this simple as that she betrayed you she showed you what her character was character is destiny so if you got a question or a challenge and you would like to get my help go to understandingrelationships.com click the products tab at the top of your screen and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon. <music>